OK, so it's not a style of food. But you know, um, flavoring. Uh, Japanese foods tend to really have little to no spicing. Um, what's that? As opposed to the Koreans. The Koreans stole it all, lousy Koreans. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Please, please don't repeat that, because I don't want to die. Um, <laughs> uh, they really didn't have room to grow and dry herbs, um, you know, because like I said, there's only 15% of the land that could be farmed. Um, some of them were imported, but uh, this was halted when Japan closed its borders. Come on in. Everybody say hi. Hi. <laughs> so um, a lot of their food tends to be kind of sweet um, or really more focused on all of the natural flavors of what's in the dish, which is something that I really love about Japanese food. And if you eat in the restaurant, you'll notice this weekend, we didn't go for a lot of the um, traditional Americanized Japanese food. Our stuff isn't overly sweet. It's not, you know, heavy, cloying, teriyaki sauce. It's pretty natural. You guys who had the yakisoba and, and all of that this weekend. Pardon me. The potion's coming back to say hi. Um, so, uh, a lot of stuff they use is uh, shoyu, you know, soy sauce, kelp. Uh, onions, sesame seeds, wasabi, and not everybody's favorite, monosodium glutamate. I know I'm allergic to it. I'm sure there's probably a lot of people who are. Monosodium glutamate, MSG. If you go to, if you go to a lot of Chinese restaurants, you'll see it says no MSG added. Um, it's just, it's basically a flavorless flavor enhancer. It doesn't add any flavor itself, but it brings out the flavor of everything. And then a lot of people puke. Uh, Are you headaches? Headaches or joint aches or, yes? Can I ask a question real quick? Sure. About the spices, I noticed they didn't use a lot, they don't use a lot of salt in their food. So how do they keep it fresh? They didn't have refrigeration, so. Um, they, they would dry and smoke a lot of things. Um, like uh, Bonito is one of their favorite ones, you know, that they can, bring out and reconstitute. So like everybody else, they kind of got creative with uh, preserving their foods. They do do a lot of pickling. So they do some salt, um, and that's they, they do their pickles fresh. Like when we think pickles, we'll think like cucumbers in a jar of brine for years. And the Japanese think pickles are, you know, some cucumbers in a bucket of salt for a day. So it's not really. I don't know. It's different. Yes? I'm so sorry. I can't hear you. Did I? Yeah, it's not Oh. OK. I will fix that next year. <laughs> like a leak? Oh. Well, the green onion's an onion. Yeah. It has, the, it has the, the word in the name, sort of. <laughs> All right. So what is usually served in traditional Japanese dishes? Rice. Um, they do like sticky rice, which is easy to be picked up with uh, chopsticks. Talk amongst yourselves. OK, I'm not verklempt, but stop that. Um, Japan actually doesn't export any of their rice. So as much as we would really love to have some of their amazing sushi rice, we can't get it. They will not sell it to us. Um, though you can get some pretty good rice from California. They, they make some really great sushi style rices. Um, it's not the same, but it's not far off. Soybeans. We're selling edamame in the restaurant, too. Hey, I'm plugging it enough. Yeah. Mm. Does everybody else like edamame? Yeah. Yeah, just dipped in salt. Oh. Um, so they are a legume, which is just a big fancy word for bean. Um, and they're, they're native to uh, Eastern Asia. Everybody say hi. Hi. Bye. Bye.
<laughs> okay, the joke's old. I got it. <laughs> um, so it's been grown and used in China for nearly 5,000 years. Um, one of the interesting facts is that soy is one of the only two complete proteins in the uh, vegetable world. And you can cheat again, the other one being quinoa. <coughs> Anybody had quinoa? It's pretty tasty. Um, not my favorite, but it's not bad. Um, so soy is really low in fat and high in protein, so it's, it's one of the best things we can eat. Yeah? Uh, do they ever use crop rotation with the soybeans? Oh. Crop rotation? Yeah. Replace the nitrogen? I would think so, but I, I honestly don't know that much about farming. I know what you're talking about, I just don't know. I would guess so, because uh, you know nobody wants the Great Dust Bowl again. Um, I, can ima I can imagine that Japan would be devastated if uh, they lost some of that stuff. So uh, we're going to keep going. Part three. Mm. Uh, so edamame. That's what we were just talking about. Uh, I put way too much text in here. Uh, so um, soy is also the primary ingredient in soy sauce. Nobody guessed that. Soy milk, or that one. Um, miso and uh, natto. I've never tried natto, but I keep meaning to. No? It's, it's, you either like it or you don't. That's what I've heard. Um, so, I mean, it's basically rotten soybeans. We, we like to put that fancy word of, you know, fermented to make it not sound so disgusting. But um, it doesn't really work. And more soy. <laughs> um, so it's also really great um, as, a, as a protein substitute, like we were saying, because um, a lot of people can't digest meat. It's, it's too hard for them. So they'll chop it up and form it into steaks and then spray paint color on it. Mmm. That's what you all have to look forward to in about 40 to 50 years. <laughs> Me too, but that's all right. Um, so it, it's also an ingredient in a lot of other products like soap and cosmetics and medicine and crayons, which I didn't know, but you know, that's cool. Clothing. Do I have any questions? Am I boring you? Should I dance? <laughs> I suffer from WBS. I am a white boy. Um, so food, eggs. I like eggs. This is the part where we go into ingredients. I may be moving too quick. I don't know what time it is. Am I good? All right. I've got another hour, so <laughs> I may be moving a little fast. But um, so they like chicken or quail eggs. Anybody had a quail egg? One, two, three, four. Hi, come on in. Everybody say hi. Hi. Uh oh. Thanks for coming. I'll be right back. Okay, cool. I won't embarrass you if you leave, I promise. Okay, I embarrassed him, but um, I, I clicked right, not. All right, kumquats. I love kumquats. Anybody else? They're sour. They are kind of sour, but that's why I like them. Um, do you have a question? Okay. So um, as you saw, it looks kind of like a, an ovoid orange, like an egg. Um, the skin's kind of sweet, and like you said, the flesh is rather tart. And um, really, they're the best between November and March. And uh, don't pick any that have been beat up. That makes for bad eating. And um, you know, peel it and eat it instantly. Although you should pay for it first. The grocery <laughs> stores really appreciate that. <laughs> Come on in, we still have a few chairs left. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. Um, chestnuts. We can roast them over an open fire, that is correct. <laughs> um, so 
they're kind of hard to get to. You have to get past that really hard outer shell and then the skin, and then you get to probably the most amazing nut you'll ever try in your life. Um, you know, even, even the Greeks agreed, and they said it was probably the food of the gods. And they shipped it all up to the top of Mount Olympus. Mm -hmm. um, you can do a lot with them, too. You can roast them, boil them, puree them, preserve them, or candy them, or just eat them. Did you have a question? No. Um, so they're actually coming into season here pretty soon. Um, and you want plump ones that aren't beat up again. That's kind of a running theme for all of our produce. Be nice to your fruits and veggies. <laughs> um, and you can store them in the fridge kind of forever. Loquats. I've never had a loquat. I don't know if anybody else has. No? Um, they call it a May apple, although it's got a pretty big pit in it. I don't know what it relation it has to an apple. It looks like none. Um, <laughs> and it, it's unique because it, it flowers in uh, the late to early winter, late fall to early winter, and um, ripens and it's pear-shaped and um, kind of the size of an apricot. And apparently they taste like cherries. I don't know. Um, I'm going to have to go to an Asian market and just pick out a can of, of uh, loquats and tell you guys what I think. Because my opinion is the only one that really, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so it's really hard to find fresh here in, in the States. Um, really, you can only find it in Asia, although in California and Florida. But we don't live there. I don't think anybody realized that. Some of you might live in California. Anyone? Sort of? You should see if you can find them fresh if you go out there anytime soon. Oh, sweet. That's awesome. Um, I do like nashi pears. Um, I'm not a big regular pear fan, but these ones I do enjoy. Um, you know, I guess it's, maybe it's because they taste like apples. I don't know. Um, and yeah, they're grown as a sweet fruit. You guys can all read. I wish I wish my handwriting were better, because then I wouldn't be reading off my PowerPoint. But I did most of this after work at like 1 a.m. Going. <laughs> what does that say? Come on in. Hi. You can come in, it's okay. We don't bite, unless you're a pear, which we're talking about. <laughs> but you don't look like a pear. <laughs> uh, persimmons. Persimmons are pretty tasty, too. Um, of course, like a lot of things that originated in China and traveled east and uh, eventually made it over here to the US, um, if you don't let them ripen, they, they taste really astringent. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, with a lot of things, we call them tannins. It's the same thing that you get in wines. It's uh, what sticks to your teeth and makes it feel like you have a fuzzy wool sweater on them. If you run your teeth over them, it's not much fun. But um, if you let them ripen, they're really tasty with that pulpy jelly. Mm. Veggies. I know, I'm, I'm not always the best veggie eater, but I try. Uh, cucumbers. Um, they use the, the, the uh, English cucumber, which goes by the misnomer of being a quote unquote seedless cucumber. It's not really true. They just have a lot less seeds in them than, and they're smaller, yeah. But that's right. I like the flavor better too. You know, the skin's a little thinner. They're a little bit lighter in taste. Um, mm, daikon. So, uh, at least my notes say that's basically just a large root. And maybe my translation is bad. I don't speak Japanese, I'll be honest. I speak enough to get in trouble and maybe get into a fight, which I don't like to do. Um, so, they're pretty big. Uh, 18, 8 to 14 inches in length and 
two to four inches in diameter, and um, you want to choose the ones that have a nice white skin and aren't beat up, <laughs> just like our fruits. I love Japanese eggplant. Yeah? I have a question about the daikon. Sure. Did you, what can you use it for besides like garnishes? Do you just use it like would carrots or? Um, you can use it like you would carrots or anything. I like to use it in my um, miso soup. Yeah, you can pickle it. You can really do a lot of different things with it. Um, you can put it in with your stir fries, with your yakisoba. I wouldn't necessarily do that as my first choice, but I do like it in miso soup. It adds a nice little crisp crunch to it. Uh, so the Japanese eggplant is related to the nightshade family. It is part of it. It's a, a lot like our eastern or western, I guess we're west, um, western eggplants, except that it has a much thinner skin, um, much better taste to the flesh. Um, I really can't stand western eggplant. It's gross. I don't like eating through the skin. And that's why I love Japanese eggplant, because you can take a bite out of it and not worry about pulling a tooth. Um, they do contain a lot of seeds and all of that, and uh, yeah, we covered that. Spinach, mmm, Popeye. Popeye hates spinach. Pop oh. Read the original comics. He doesn't like it. Well, he may not like it, but it's still his superpower thingy. <laughs> I think I don't know. In the decimal place. <laughs> They, they carry to one and suddenly Popeye liked spinach. I got it. All right. Mistakenly made it more healthy than it actually was in terms of vitamin A content. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm trying not to break it, but it's making lots of popping noises at me. Um, so, I don't know. I like spinach. I like the, the flavor that it kind of gives. Um, and that's because of oxalic acid. And that's just for nerds like me who like to talk about foodie things. Um, fresh spinach can really be found year round. And you want those nice dark green leaves that aren't shriveled and gross looking. Um, you'll see nasty looking spinach, and you'll know instantaneously you don't want it. Isn't there something that you're supposed to eat with raw spinach to? I think you can get some of the iron out of it, and I don't remember what it is, but you're right. If you eat something with it, like it, you'll get like 75% as opposed to 2%, which yeah. is what you'll get just by eating it alone. Oh, um, please research that. I sure will. <laughs> and then I will forget about it next year, and somebody will go, so what are you supposed to eat with spinach? <laughs> Go! <laughs> uh, sweet potatoes. Mmm, yes. <laughs> sweet potatoes, which are different than yams. Um, they, they confused them here in the States because they wanted to sell more yams. So they sold them as sweet potatoes. Um, yeah, everybody can read. I think most people know what a sweet potato is anyways, right? No? Kind of? Cricket? Yes? Isn't it, isn't it true that you can't get real yams here because they're tropical and they're huge? You can get them on the East Coast, and that's why you get a lot of them that are canned. It's pretty hard to get fresh ones. I've seen them in the stores, you know, more around, like, Thanksgiving. But you can really tell the difference between them. Um, because of the coloring of the skin. Um, and sweet potatoes are generally very nice and have a, a singular shape to them where your yam kind of kinks and looks ugly on the outside. Um, that's, that's the easiest way to tell the difference between the two. Um, OK, uh, yes, yeah, so you can find them kind of sporadically. You know, choose medium-sized ones. Don't beat them up again. And um, they actually are. They're really hard to store. You have to use them fresh. 
because um, you have to you have to keep them around 55 degrees and absolutely dark. Otherwise, they grow eyes faster than potatoes do, and uh, it's really nasty. So seaweeds, um, hijiki. Um, it's a kind of a brown sea vegetable. I don't know if you'd really call it a seaweed, but sure, why not? Um, and it's been a part of their, you know, balanced diet for centuries. Uh, high in fiber and a lot of vitamins. And according to the folklore, folklore, nobody heard that, right? Although it could be folklore because we eat it. Um, <laughs> it aids in health and beauty and has been associated with the black lustrous hair of the Japanese. Um, nori. You know, a lot of the sushi uses nori. Um, paper thin sheets of seaweed, and you can get them in a lot of different colors from dark green to purple and even black. And uh, talked about sushi, a lot, really high in protein and vitamins and calcium and iron. And most of the time out here, we find it packaged in plastic or sometimes canned. Uh, wakame, never had this one either. Um, deep green color and, and used in many soups, like miso, um, and some herdaceous occasionally in salads. This one is really high in omega-3 fatty acids and is one of the most uh, nutritious vegetables available. Um, in Australia, they really don't like it. It's considered uh, one of the worst wheats ever seen and is 97th on the list of the most invasive species in the world. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they like to be eaten. That's why they keep coming back. They're going to strangle us someday. Kanbu. Um, hello. OK. Um, uh, usually sold dried or shredded. And um, it's one of the main ingredients in dashi. Uh, we made all of our dashi fresh for the uh, udon noodle bowls, which took me forever. I hope you really appreciate it. It's uh, delicious. And it's one of those things that has a, a lot of really naturally occurring monosodium glutamate. Um, and the first written record of kombu's use was in uh, 797 AD. Um, they, however, they, they suspect it's much older than that. It's been used a lot longer. And I got this request last year, so I've added in a section on mushrooms. Yay, mushrooms. Um, shiitakes um, originated in China. And uh, you know, this one was really goofy. I, I tried to, to look up some stuff, and I decided that I can't use uh, Wikipedia anymore, because <laughs> the Wikipedia article reads basically, this can be traced back to prehistoric times, which I believe. However, you know, the first use was only a, a thousand years ago. A thousand years ago seems pretty early for prehistoric times, but okay. And then it went on to contradict itself quite a bit more. So um, I found other interesting sites to go for. So don't read the Wikipedia site on shiitakes. <laughs> No. Um, so as we all know, it's a large feature of a lot of Asian dishes. Um, it's really used kind of all over the place, Chinese, Japanese, Thai, Korean, and Vietnamese. And um, we use the word shi because it comes from the shi tree, um, which the dead logs is what they grow the mushrooms on. Um, and it's often a lot uh, of a meat replacement in uh, vegetarian dishes. So maitake, it doesn't look like a mushroom, but it is. Um, so it has a large underground fungus, like a tuber-like root. And it's just a cluster of stalks that stick up out of the ground. And it's known throughout the world as the hen of the woods. Um, in Japan, which is where it really gets the largest, some of those roots can grow up to be 50 pounds, which is just Amazing. I, I can't even imagine it. Um, so that's why they call it the King of Mushrooms. Isn't that a video game, the King of Mushrooms? No, no, okay, that was a bad joke. I'm really sorry. 
Um, <laughs> uh, and it's been really traditionally used in medicine to boost the immune system. Um, it's been shown to help uh, glucose and cholesterol, and I didn't put it on here because I ran out of space, but um, they even showed that it's starting to help fight cancer, too. So um, if we can find them, I'd eat them. And you can get them here usually. And this is the last one I put on here, which is the uh, Matsutake. So yes, that's, that's a correct price on, on there, 20,000 yen. <laughs> so what is that, uh, $200 for about an ounce of mushrooms? Um, so yes, it's highly prized in Japan. Um, because it's, it can't be cultivated, it has to be harvested uh, wild from the, the, the forests. Uh, a lot of times it's found at the roots of the red pine. And while it grows in a lot of different countries, including the US, um, the Japanese prize their variety over everybody else's. So because of a little gross roundworm that goes around and kills all of the mushrooms and eats through the pine roots, um, it's made it really hard to find this. So yeah, $2,000 a kilo, or about 1.6 pounds, which is, I wouldn't pay it. <laughs> <laughs>